Nou goed, Dr. Michael Louis van de Independent Candidate Association kijkt volgend om saam te gesels oor die voorgestelde verandering aan die verkiezingswijzigingswet ontwerp. En hij vertelt wat er impact dit op die parlement gaan en natuurlijk op jou ook als kiezers. Good morning, Dr. Michael. Well, good morning, you too. En ek gaan een bykie Afrikaans praat nadat jylle die vorige onderhoud gehad dat jullie niet uitgesluit voel, nie die ek daar so. I have to start off with who is the Independent Candidate Association? Well, good morning, Jennifer and Pierre. No, well, the Independent Candidate Association was formed the beginning of the year because uh, many individuals said, well, it's an excellent idea to have new voices and new actors on the political stage that the voters can choose but who they are accountable to and who's going to professionalize them and train them and equip them. So we formed this organization and um, it's really like the Law Society of South Africa. It's a professional body. It will never be on a ballot paper, but it's a professional body to, to be good custodians of the values of independent candidates that's going to avail themselves in the next elections. While we're on the subject of being good custodians, tell us about the parliament at this stage. There is this... <laughs> supposed change in the electoral law. Um, uh, how did this happen so quietly, so suddenly, and, and, and how did it go so wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, it hasn't actually been so suddenly. Um, I was actually the start of a court case in 2017 already that we said that the Electoral Act is unconstitutional. And just to give the viewers just a view about uh, what was the court case about, um, it is that the constitution of our country, which is the highest law, says that um, in section 19b in the human rights section, that every single person has the right to stand for public office. That means if any of you wanting to stand or any of the viewers want to stand in public office, you have the human right to do it. However, the electoral act that governs the elections says that you have to belong to a political party. And that's where the conflict was. That was by a hofsaker, dear, um, dear five um, workers hofsaker. We had 12 senior council, and it's taken us five years to get to where we are last year. Wow. I have to ask, because obviously you are from the Independent Candidate Association, and you guys also push for independent candidates. You also spoke about, basically, you can almost say that it's unconstitutional, the law, electoral law as it is. What value do you think an independent candidate brings to the political sphere? You know, Jennifer, I think the big thing is that all of us are looking for new voices and new actors. And a party political structure is such that it's very, very difficult for new individuals to get into that structure. So I was part of a political party for 10 years. Um, I was chairman of that party. And whilst they encourage individuals to come in, there is a story that they have to say, you must first place to go up and you must first a bit of the people to work for that you can stand. So um, we are looking for, look at a person like Tuli Madansela. Mm the chances are that she would never want to be part of a political party, but yet she would love to add value to the political landscape, especially when we in problems. So um, because I'm also, um, you know, got a company, um, we always encourage new people, new blood, new voices, and especially our young people to come to the political landscape. So we are looking, we're starting a campaign to identify 200 um, new strong people that have been rectors of universities, head of hospitals, head of municipality councils, head of media, head of sport, to say, I believe that I'm called to be a statesman or stateswoman. Please equip us and train us so that we can get and avail ourselves for public office. And voters want to be represented. It's all about representation. I, I vote for someone who will have my issues at heart. In the Constitution, representation and one vote, uh, one seat, the concept is, is, is very clearly stated and stipulated uh, and that every vote should count. In the change in this electoral, uh, 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 in, the, in the, the, the proposed change now, this has somehow been construed or misformed into something else in this proposed change. Well, Pierre, you've hit the nail on the head. The big thing is the voters now, especially now, 
when we see the demise of our country, when I hear what's happened in Da'ar in your previous broadcast, and also um, the ESCOM rising in prices and things, people are wanting to nominate their own leaders. So what happens at the moment? You go to the past in the past elections and vote for a political party. You vote for the ANC, the DA, a Freedom Front, whatever party you're wanting to vote. But you've given away your power of attorney for them to choose leaders on your behalf. And as a result, definitely a person like myself, and I'm sure individuals and many of your, of your viewers, are saying, we wanting to nominate our leaders. Mm. Show us at the next elections. Don't show us an ANC flag and Cyril Ramaphosa. Show us who our leaders are. Show us what their CV is, their curriculum, their background, their experience, and we are wanting to vote for them. And that's why the electoral bill um, is completely flawed, because Parliament has not gone far enough to divide our country into constituencies so that Pretoria can choose its own leaders, or Johannesburg can choose its own leaders. It's gone and said Gauteng must change their own leaders which makes it very difficult for individuals to touch and feel those leaders. Um, Michael, what is civil society going to do about this? Well, a very big day today, and that's why I'm so pleased about this interview. Um, for a long time, civil society has warned the Standing Committee of Parliament that the bill that's currently there is unconstitutional, it's flawed, and so today we're going to be about 100 civil societies that are going to meet on the steps of Parliament to go and say that we do not accept the current bill that's on the table. We're pushing for the majority report of Ali Musa, where we're wanting this country to be divided into constituencies. And we're going to warn them that um, our election is in a year and a half's time. If you don't concede to public voices and civil society, then we've got no alternative to go back to the Khan court. And the yammer to doubt us is that the independent electoral commissions and all of us are going to mm. suffer because there could be a constitutional crisis. Vali Musa is, is preaching at this stage on this subject and he's talking about all the right things and he's, he's hitting it on the nose. And when he says that members of parliament in the bigger parties don't even have an idea what they're going to vote for in this proposed bill. Um, but they're voting in any case because the system tells them to vote. Is, is that maybe the problem in the system at this stage, that, that, that the, the bigger parties might be holding on to more power or looking for, for a, I'm going to say it now, a backdoor maybe, if the power disappears somewhere and the votes disappear, that there's still a way to hold on to power? Is that, I'm just being plain devil's advocate here. No, I think you know a little bit more than just that, Pierre. The, now, there's actually two problems. Firstly, I've been working with this bill for five years. It's e extremely complicated, very intricate, and most professionals, even academics, don't understand this bill because it's written in a language that nobody can understand. And as a result, um, most of your parliamentarians don't understand the bill. So, Vali is very outspoken about it and says one of the values um, that we want in an electoral system is it it must be simple, that the people mm. in Kailicha and Langa can understand it. Mm. So that's the first thing. And then exactly what you're saying, it all goes about power. I mean, you cannot expect um, turkeys to vote for Christmas. You can't expect parliamentarians to vote to take give away their power. Yeah. Wow. But the problem that I've got there is that, and now this is what, because I'm wanting to say what we're trying to do is I'm definitely not an anti-political party person because political parties have got a huge function. Mm. But the problem we've got is, is that 17,4 million people went to the polls in 2019. 19,6 million didn't vote. We are first to get part of those 19,6 million people to vote that we can be a more inclusive democracy. Absolutely. So if I listen to you, it's more about accountability, holding those in power accountable for their actions, um, promoting more people to get involved, getting good leaders to actually lead the country that wants to make a difference and that's there for the right reasons, and perhaps breaking the status quo. 
breaking away from what we're just used to, Dr. Michael. Thank you so much for taking time to actually speak to us about this very, very serious topic. Thank you so much for what Kruat Mbait does and keep mobilizing and encouraging people to stand if they believe they call to, to, to governance. Absolutely. Daar hoor jy dit nou self, dit is natuurlijk Dr. Michael Louis, hy is dan van die Independent Candidate Association en ons het gepraat oor die voorgestel veranderinge aan die verkiesingswijzigingswetsontwerp.